I want to ask you about something, uh, your other passion. I think you have, I might have several passions, but I think two primary passions, preaching and the other one is photography. And you have been about it as long as I've known you. I don't think I understood it again when I was in high school, but you loved it enough to build a dark room in your basement at your house in um, Tucker. And right. you would go out on these expeditions. And I think if you're still able, you still are going and doing that. But what about photography became such a central part of your life? What was it about it? Was it the time uh, alone? Was it what God spoke to you through nature? Was it a combination of things? That's a good question. And I'm happy to answer it. Um, I'll tell you this and then I'll tell you I got started. But anyway, Here's the key. When I look through the lens of a camera, first of all, if, if I'm looking at, at a mountain or whatever I'm looking at, and then I look through the lens of a camera, which shuts out all of that and zeroes in on this, that's when my heart starts beating. I mean, I think, what an awesome scene. You may look at it and think, oh, what's that all about? But when you narrow it down, for example, that's a good example. Let's say that flower right there. If I stood over here and shot that flower, it'd just be a flower. But if I got really, really, really close and I saw each one, all of a sudden I would see what an awesome thing God's done. Because there's no flower in the world exactly like that one. And it's this picture and that and a mountain spring. In other words, all the things, and I would say that photography it's, it's, it's the second most important thing in my life because I keep seeing God. And, you know, I've been, the one thing that's bothered me about this year is I couldn't go anywhere and do anything. And um, I, I just see God in all that. And I look at some, well, I'll give you an example. I went to Switzerland. I, one of my primary reasons for going and going to this particular place up in this mountain was to see a particular mountain peak. And so I'd, I'd been there, I had to ride the train up there a pretty good ways, and then I was there at rain, first day rain, second day rain, third day. <laughs> and I just chose this hotel, it's top floor, and and uh, the, the um, I didn't even know where it was because it's cloudy the whole time. I kept praying, God, you know how far I've come. Lord, you know how much I, I would love to do this. And God, I'm giving you all the credit. And Father, 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 I wake up the fourth morning. I still remember. And I had opened the, the uh, shutters. I woke up, and what's right there in front of me, and I run over to the window, and here's this huge mountain peak. It's dark. It's white with snow. It's absolutely awesome. I, I just, I just said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's the reason I came. I knocked on the wall for my friend. I said, get up and get dressed. So I've had so many of those moments in my life where I've just seen God answering prayer and answering prayer just as much about seeing something that I wanted to see because he knew I was going to give him credit for it. And um, that's the second most important thing I do in life. And one of the things that's frustrating for me for this time when we can't go and can't photograph and I have all this wonderful equipment and what do I do? I walk and I pick it up every once in a while, <laughs> shoot out my one. And anyway, I see that as another avenue in my life of seeing God. Mm. Because I can get just as excited about seeing him in a beautiful mountain stream, the mountains of snow, the mountain, just all of that's just God to me. That's beautiful. Uh, if we